Good morning. It's 10 o'clock here at First General Baptist Church of Irving. This is Brother Dion coming to you from my house. We're still under our COVID restrictions at this time. Uh, just want y'all to understand that we're doing this for the safety of our church members and for everyone in the area. That uh, we're just uh, trying to make sure that everyone stays safe. And I uh, hope everyone had a happy new year. I uh, hope they uh, spent time with their family or did what they could. And uh, prayed the old year out and the new year in. And uh, God's blessings continue to rain on us. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but I was out of town. And the Lord gave us traveling grace. Uh, we uh, went up to Colorado and uh, visited my daughter and her husband and just had a great time. And the Lord just continues to bless. We got to see some beautiful country. Uh, how anyone can look at this planet and see how it works and not know that there's a grand design, a grand plan, and don't know that there's a God in heaven, I'll never understand. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for this this country and for this people. I know we've gone through some hard times and, and I feel like some other things are coming. Uh, we just need to stay true to God, stay strong with him. Because what we're talking about in our Sunday school lesson is that Christ was called to proclaim. He was called to make our lives better. He was created by God to be God on earth to show us the way. Uh, God had showed his people, the, the Israelites, the Hebrews, the Jewish children, his commandments and given them all to them and had set up a law that had man had taken and become a taskmaster. But praise God, I want you to think about this, how important this is and how great this is and how truly wonderful God is to us and, and to us and for us. He made a plan by which through Jesus Christ and him alone, we can now have salvation. We don't have to depend on the law. We don't have to depend on the taskmaster that man had taken and changed so greatly that it wasn't even, uh, uh, it didn't even resemble the law that God gave down to man. God, we're going to study here in just a minute, De Deuteronomy. And we're, this is Moses' writing. And, uh, Throughout this, this whole series right now, we've been co comparing Moses quite a bit to, to Christ and what he did and how he led the Israelites out of out of the Hebrew children out of captivity. God, Christ did the same thing for us. Praise God. And it's through him that we can be saved. Uh, I hope you're uh, as excited about this as I am. Because I tell you what, studying the word of God and getting in, there's nothing better. Praise God. We can understand what's to come, and we can understand how we can overcome it. No matter what happens, we can overcome it through Jesus Christ. We can overcome it by obeying God. We can overcome it by becoming obedient children, knowing his will, following his will, doing as he would have us to do. Praise God we have that opportunity. Praise God he's given us the way. And that way is Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes unto the Father except by him. So we're going to open up our study today. Like I said, it's about Christ being called to proclaim his gospel, his salvation, his truth. I'm so thankful today that that truth that was is in Christ is so is so relevant and so true today as it was then. Praise God, He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, forever, ever. But we mark time. God set up day and night for us. God set up the seasons for us, so we can know the time, so we can understand. We just went past the year. Twenty twenty was a rough year, everyone says, and it was. But praise God, our Christ doesn't change. God doesn't change. Jesus is the same yesterday and forever. Time is for man. Christ does everything on God's time. We do too. We just have to understand that. Yes, it's important that we mark the days. Yes, it's important. But I'm telling you right now, it means nothing to God other than he gave us that. He gave us night and day. 
He gave us time on this planet. We need to make that time, use that time. Protect that time. Be part and, and understand that we need him in our lives. Okay, we're gonna open up here the Deuteronomy and we're gonna have we're gonna find Moses has been leading the, the the Hebrew Hebrew children, the Israelites, for forty years. They're up to the edge. And uh, this is gonna be in Deuteronomy the eighth chapter. We're gonna read the first eight verses. Excuse me, first eleven verses, and that's the eighth chapter. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall be observed to do, that you may live, multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto you, unto your fathers. He's telling them. He gave them the commandments to make their lives better. We need to understand that about Christ's commandments. He gave us two. God gave the Jewish children the law. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. We need to parallel this with this. Remember what Christ told Satan when he was being tempted of him? Man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Praise God. These things are binding. They're true. We know that they're true. We can understand that today by studying his word, learning of him, listening to the Holy Spirit, believing him. He cannot lie. Praise God. He tells us the truth. He shows us the way. He's made that path by which we can be redeemed to him. Through his son, Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. We find here Moses telling his the, the Jewish children this. God gave us commandments to make our lives better so we might be redeemed to him. We might be obedient children. He gave us this 40 years in the wilderness after he sent us out of Israel, out of Egypt. He gave us this 40 years in the, in, in the wilderness to prove us, to see if we were going to obey his commandments. Praise God today, our only route of salvation is through Jesus Christ. We don't have to worry about that taskmaster that was the law. I want us to understand that. Our salvation is based on our belief and faith and understanding that Jesus Christ is our Savior and that he is the only begotten Son and the only way by which we must be saved. We look 2021, 20, there again. As I did 2020, I didn't know what was going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen, but praise God, we know that Jesus Christ is on the throne. He's at the right hand of God, making intercessions for us today, just as he was in 2019, and the time before that, and the time coming up until, until his Father, our Father, our Heavenly Father says, Son, go and get your bride. And we can see the signs, as we talked about a while ago with the it was the day and night, the seasons that God set up for us. We can see what's going to happen. We can tell that we're getting close to the second coming of Christ. We don't have to be ignorant. We can understand. And I think it's very important that we as a Christian people need to get on our knees and ask the Lord to forgive our nation. But I'll tell you what, more importantly, we need to be ready if he does come. It could happen any time, and we need to be ready. You need to be ready. He's coming for us. People that are made ready, that have accepted Christ and followed him. Excuse me. Just as he gave those commandments to the Hebrew children, to, and he gave them that time to prove them. People, this is our time. We're on earth. This is our time to prove that we're worthy to receive his salvation, that we have accepted him as our Savior. 
Sometimes we have to be proved. Sometimes we have to go through trials and tribulations. Sometimes we have to be knocked down to, to understand that he is God the Father. He is our creator. And I hope you've accepted that. I hope you believe it. I hope you've placed it in your heart. I hope you've written those words on your heart that you'll know that he's your heavenly father and that Christ is his only begotten son and that he saves us. He's, there's no other way. There's no other way. So I'll pick back up here. Like I said, we're, I hope you get as excited about this as I do. I truly do. God's word is so good and so faithful and so true. Then his Holy Spirit confirms it in me. And I can know that I'm a, his child. And I can know that what I'm reading is true and just and faithful. Praise God. I hope you have that. It is such a blessing, such a feeling. The remnant wax not old upon thee, neither did thy fruit swell these forty years. God delivered them. They, he, he's telling them this. I delivered you, your feet. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that, that, that as a man chastises his son, so the Lord thy God chastises thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. <clears throat> Everybody talks about God is love, and he is. He loves us. That's what this plan of salvation was. This is what he did to his children. That's why he led them to Egypt. That's why we have to go through trials and tribulations. But he loves us. But first of all, the beginning of knowledge is fear in God. I get in trouble all the time with people. Not with God, but by the people. When I talk about we need to start with fear in God. We don't have to worry about who can take our... Our life, we have to worry about who can take our soul. And the only one that can do that is God. We can allow it. We can allow the devil to take our soul. God wants us redeemed to him. But I'm telling you right now, the fear. We have to fear the living God. We have to understand that he controls our destiny if we don't take care of our, if we don't honor it. If we don't believe in him and follow him and listen to him and be obedient children, there is a hell for people that do not obey him. I know it's not popular to preach or to teach it. We find it right here, though. We started back in, at the beginning of the time. Adam and Eve was told not to eat that fruit. They let the devil come in. They let him start that lie. Surely you'll not die. Surely you'll not die. God just don't want you to be as smart as him. Basically, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what the devil was telling them. And they partook of the fruit. They became aware. That's where sin began. On this earth. It was by a lie. I'm telling you right now today, there are preachers out there today that are spreading lies. And I'm sorry to say that. And uh, I know that we're looking forward to a great year 2021 through the Lord Jesus Christ. But we still have to be aware of what's going on. Aware of what's being taught. You have to know the doctrine you're learning and listening to or hearing is the true doctrine of Jesus Christ and salvation through him alone. So yes, we're going to have trials and tribulations. Yes, we have to fear God. We have to. He loves us. I know that He's my, that Jesus Christ is my Savior. I know that He's the only begotten Son. And I know that as long as I obey Him and be obedient, obedient to God, I'm adopted into the, to the family of God through Jesus Christ, that I'll have salvation. But woe unto those that don't. Woe unto those that preach there's another way. Woe unto those that believe there's no God. They have to fear the wrath of God. We ought to fear the wrath of God. I know he loves me. I know I'm saved. But praise God, we need to understand that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. So as, as Moses told them, here, I'm going to read that fifth and sixth verse again. 
Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chastises his son, so the Lord thy God chastises thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Yes, we are to fear him. But praise God, we know he loves us. And we know that we have that salvation. We know that he made a way. Just as he did for the for the, the Hebrew children. He made a way for them to be redeemed to him by obeying his law to make their lives better. And that's what I can't understand about people that when they start talking about how hard it is to be a Christian. It must be hard. No, praise God, it's not. We have an advocate with the Father. He gave us those two commandments. Love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. Why? To make our lives better. Praise God. If, if you're a Christian, you should realize that we've got the best of it. He, God gave us this planet. God gave us time. God gave us the seasons. And then he sent his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Praise God. You can't get excited about that. Just that part alone. Like I said, I just was up in the mountains. But I'm going to tell you right now, I see beauty here in God's world. And you can say what you want to. God created this for man and for us to enjoy it. Enjoy our time here. But we still need to be obedient. We have to understand that there's no other way for salvation except to Jesus Christ. I kind of got off topic here, but I'm trying to continue to carry on in what is called that he was, Christ was called to proclaim his gospel. We got Moses here, and this Moses here talking to us, talking to the Hebrew children. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. And land of brooks of water, and fountains of deaths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, oil, olive and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in the in a land whose stones are iron, out of these hills they may dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then shalt thou bless the Lord thy God. For the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, and not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, which are commanded thee this day. <laughs> Praise God, we got to understand. The commandments, the law was written and given to man to make his life better and also make him become obedient and understand that God was the Father. There's no other way. To this, to this, but praise God. He sent his only son. Not to defeat the law, law destroy it, the law, but to fulfill it. We now have a better hope through Jesus Christ. We're going to get over to our to the to the scripture of our lesson. And you're going to find that in the fourth chapter of Luke. And we're going to begin with the 14th verse here in the 4th chapter of Luke. And it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out of him through all the region about. And he taught his synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he sent into his synagogue. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered to him the book of Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and gave it again to the minister, and sat down. 
and the eyes of all them were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This is the day the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all him bear witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. He's telling them, just as Isaiah prophesied. Had prophesied his coming. And the power that he would have. And that he would have his ministry. And Jesus returned to the power of the Spirit into the Galilee. Now I want you to understand. Christ understood that the Holy Spirit was coming. Christ knew about the Holy Spirit. I want to read a passage for, for you real quick from the, uh, Acts. Uh, the first chapter. Let me find it again. I was studying this. Christ knew of it. Christ was aware of the Holy Spirit. Christ knew that he was part of the Trinity. But when, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses of, of tongue unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and the Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the world. And Jesus returned unto the power of the Spirit unto Galilee. Galilee. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you right now, it takes all three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That is the Trinity. That's what makes up our... That's part of the plan of salvation. God, through Moses, told his children, I made the commandments to make your life better, to redeem you to me, to test you, to prove you. What did we talk about earlier? God doesn't change. Christ doesn't change. We find Christ here proclaiming his gospel, telling them that as Hosea prophesied, I'm here, you're seeing it fulfilled in your ears right now. People, that's just as true today as it was whenever Jesus told them that. We're seeing his proof daily in Christ that he loves us and that, yes, we're going to have to have uh, trials and tribulations, but praise God we can overcome them through him. I know last year was hard. We lost loved ones and uh, difficult times. We had to come to you through their social media a lot. But praise God, that's just as true that the word that we would spread then, the truth that's being told on social media about Christ through the God fearing and, and Bible believing and Bible preaching ministers and teachers, we still have to get the word out. And, uh, for those of you that are members or those of you that can offer tithes and offering, we'd appreciate it. Uh, and our, we'll let you, if you go to our Facebook page or to our uh, webpage, it has the address and everything where you can send them. Uh, I, I know it's something we don't like to talk about because we know the Lord's going to provide, but we are asking that if, if you have your tithes and offering, if you could send them to Brother Glenn. Uh, the, like I said, the address on Facebook page and on our web page. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But uh, we still have to get the word out. We're preaching and teaching the word of God. And praise the Lord that we have it. We have found the truth that, that we can find in it. And uh, we're just thankful for you. We're thankful for another day, another year. And I, I want you, I truly believe, and I want you to understand that time measured by man is not time measured by God. A day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like unto a day. So hold true to your faith. We're saved by grace. God's grace. Yes, he loves us. Through our faith. And not of works. Lest any man should boast. But when you're saved and you're a child of God and you're obedient and you believe in Jesus Christ, and you know he's in your heart, and you know the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, you're going to have your works. 
be ready for Christ to come. It can happen any time. Christ here proclaimed that Isaiah prophesied him coming. He is the, the, the first coming. He's the Messiah. I want to tell you too, though, it's been prophesied of the, his second coming. He told us of it. Read Matthew, the 24th chapter. We can see these things coming fulfilled, just as they could see them coming fulfilled before he came. Be ready. It can happen in the twinkling of an eye. With that last trump, be ready. Make sure that you're part of that select. Those that made their election sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Make sure of that today, please. Now is the accepted time. Yes, we've gone into another year, but that don't mean we're promised tomorrow. There's that wonderful song, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. I hope Christ is holding, I hope you're holding on, just hold on to Christ. Through all of this, hold on to Christ. Be true. Know that he's your Savior. Today I want to take a moment and uh, offer up prayers for Patrick Tufts and his family. He lost his grandmother. And uh, we love Patrick. We are mentoring with him, studying with him. And uh, yes, I'm supposed to be the teacher, but I tell you what, I learned more from and through him. Praise God for him. And I'm so thankful for Brother Carl as a mentor. Whenever I have a question or a problem, I know right where to go. I know Brother Carl's always open, and he'll tell me the truth. He'll help me with what I need. He'll guide me biblically. And that's what I'm trying to do for Patrick. It's not what I say that matters. It's what the Lord says. What the Lord leads us to. What he guides us to. How we find the truth through him. And I hope you I hope you enjoy the Bible study we're having here. I do. This is Sunday school from it's uh, the series we got right now is, is about Christ and His calling and and the prophecy of it in the Old Testament, the completion of it in the New Testament. Because I want you to understand how important it is that we know that if we know that yes, it was prophesied by Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and it came through and true through Jesus Christ. The things that Daniel and all the others prophesied that Jesus told us about his second coming are just as true. Like we said, we we might we may mark time and hours, minutes, days, weeks, months, years, millenniums. It's still relevant to God. He gave us this time to worship him. He gave us this time to prove us. Take it. Make it yours through Jesus Christ. That's all I'm asking. Make sure that you made your election sure through Jesus Christ. I truly believe we're closer today than we've ever been to his coming. We can see the changing of the fig trees. We know that summer's nigh. We can see by the way the world's turning and the things that are happening that it's coming nigh. So look up. That's where our redemption is. We shouldn't be looking down as Christians. We should be looking up to the glorious day when Jesus Christ returns for us. And yes, we talked about fear. I tell you right now, I am fearful for those that don't believe in God. I'm fearful for those that have accepted Christ. We need to be pre preaching the word more than ever. We need to be preaching the truth that Christ is coming for people that are made ready, that made their election sure, that chose Christ. That's what we have to tell them. Because I've said it before. I'll say it again. I've preached it my whole life. There is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And not everyone's going to make it. These universalist preachers that are preaching that God is love and, and he wants you to be prosperous and, and all these things. God wants us to be obedient children to be redeemed to him through Jesus Christ. That's it.
God doesn't count days. God doesn't count wealth. God wants us to be obedient to him and do what he would have us to do. He wants us to accept his son, Jesus Christ, and the salvation that comes through him and him alone. I apologize, I'm a little dry. Yes, Sister Pauline, I got my coffee. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. I thank you for this time. I'm thankful for another year. Yes, I know COVID is bad. I'm praying that this the vaccine and the things that, that are coming about are, are God's will on us. And I'm hoping that we'll, through his grace, we'll find a cure. Through his love, we'll find a cure. I'm not dependent on man. And I hope you aren't either. Don't get me wrong. I believe in doctors. I think God put them on this planet, gave them the knowledge. But I'm looking to God to guide me through this. I'm looking for that better hope in Jesus Christ today. And I hope you are too. Because I feel like that, that will make you smile. That will make you know that he's in charge. And that he has a better plan for all of us. Once again, thank you for your time this morning. Please continue to pray for Patrick and his family. Pray for all those that have lost loved ones. We need to lift each other up. We need to edify each other. Like I talked about, and like Moses told his people, God gave them the commandments to make their life better and to prove them. Well, today, Christ gave us his commandments to make us love God, love our neighbor, make our lives better, and prepare us for what God has in store for us through his Son, Jesus Christ. And how do we know this? Through the Holy Spirit. Praise God. The Trinity works. Trust it. Believe it. Know it. Accept it. And your life will be better. And you'll have a better life. And you'll be a better person and a better Christian. Thank God for his word. Thank God that Christ proclaimed that he was the Son of God. That he was the one that Isaiah had prophesied about and that he had come to make our lives better through him. And it can be. And I hope today that if you're struggling with something, that you find that peace through Jesus Christ. I hope that if you're lost and undone, that you find that peace and that hope and that salvation through Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, I've spent this week getting everything ready. I think I have solved the problem of the skipping and the and all that in our on our uh, rebroadcast of videos. Uh, I've, I've been working through uh, our broadcast medium and also the filters we've been using and I've been talking to uh, Facebook Live or the Facebook people. I think I have it correct. Please pray for that that we do. But please if you if you're not getting it or if you're not if it's not coming in clear Please don't hesitate to send me an email. That's uh, dion.burgett at gmail or send it to the church, First General Baptist Church Irving at gmail or send it to Brother Carl or text me at 903-513-1269. We're trying to put the best program we can out. I've been working on it. Uh, I think we've got it figured out. But praise God, I know Christ does. So bear with me, please. Uh, 11 o'clock, we're going to have some praise and worship. Then we're going to have a Brother Carl message from January of last year. And uh, I hope you're having a great time in the Lord. I hope you're having a great day. It's a beautiful day. I know we went through some storms. Uh, I went through some snowstorms, but y'all went through some rain. And uh, there again, we're thankful for that. So I'm going to close in prayer now. And I ask that you just bear with us, and we're going to try to get this straightened out today. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come at this time. Lord, thank you for this day, Lord, your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for your word, the truth that we can find in it. We're thankful that the Christ came to the, to the earth to walk and, and to, to give us an example and to proclaim that he was the Messiah. And we're so thankful for the commandments that he gave us, Lord. Father, Lord, we do love you. We praise you. We thank you. Now, Lord, we lift up for those that have lost.
lost loved ones during this time. Lord, it, every time we turn around, it seems like someone else is passing away. Lord, Father, we ask that you just be with those families and touch them. Lord, we ask you to be with Sister Angie today, Lord. And Lord, just take away that angst and that, that uh, anxiousness. Lord, Father, Lord, we just want you to give her peace. Lord, we're so thankful for the love you've showed us. But, Lord, we also realize that we need to fear you. Lord, we can, we know that you can take the soul, Lord, Father, and condemn it to hell. Lord, we're just so thankful, though, that you set us away through Jesus Christ, uh, which we must be saved. And we're so thankful that we have accepted that salvation. And, Lord, that you love us enough to send him. Lord, we ask you as we go into this 2021 that everything we say and do will bring glory to you. Lord, we just we can't wait till we can get back together and have fellowship safely and honor you and praise you. Lord, we can do it in our homes today, though. We, Lord, we so are, are so thankful. We're so thankful for the many blessings you've given us as we continue on this world. Lord, we know that we have to live in the world, but we don't have to be part of it. That we could honor you and and praise you and worship you in our lives and in our and the way we live our lives and the examples that we show. And Lord, we hope that we are letting our light shine today. That people will see you in us and bring glory to you. Lord, once again, we thank you for the word the truth we find in it daily, Lord Father. We're so thankful that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost that Christ talked about when he went into Galilee here, that he was filled with the ghost, the Holy Spirit, and he was doing as he was told, Lord. We just ask that you would guide us, direct us, protect us, forgive us where we failed thee, watch over us, Lord, and just lead us on through the rest of the year. And until we can get together as a church, we are so thankful for your love and the compassion that you've showed us and just continue to guide us, direct us, protect us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. For your precious holy name we pray. Amen. We thank you for your time this morning. Be sure and join us here in about 25 minutes with the the, the message that the Lord laid on Brother Carl's heart, the one that, that he's given me to, to rebroadcast. And we're so thankful for you. And we pray that, that it's coming through to you clear, and you can hear, and you can understand. And you can see, because God's word is just as important today as it has ever been. So take the time. Seek him. Learn of him. Be obedient children. Thank you.